But after a few hours, when the moon disappeared from the horizon, he realized that moon was not the god. Ibrahim was disappointed, but he continued to sit there on top of the mountain, watching the horizon. When it was morning, the sun came up. He looked at the sun and wondered again if this could be the god, as it was bigger and gave light. But when the sun disappeared in the evening, he realized that it was not Allah, as the true god would never set. Then, a sudden revelation happened to him. He realized that true God cannot be created. He understood that Allah is the creator of everything, even the sun, the moon, and the stars. He knew that Allah had just guided him to the truth. It was then that he realized that Allah had chosen him to be a prophet. The prophet led a new life from that day. He met his father and told him about his revelation. But his father was not very pleased. How dare you reject my gods? He asked angrily. The people will stone you if they hear you talking like this. His father shouted at him. The prophet tried to reason with him many times. But his father rejected his pleas. Ibrahim salam was asked to leave the house immediately for speaking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet warned his father about Allah's punishment if he doesn't repent, but his father ignored him. The Prophet was very sad, and he was forced to leave his house. Hardly did he knew that it was just the beginning of his trials. Ibrahim salam knew that his mission was to call people back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He traveled to nearby towns and preached about Allah. He spoke to the people about the true God and warned them of the consequences of idol worship. Allah is the one and only true God. There is no other God but Allah. There is nobody worthy of worship except Him. Do not bow down before the idols anymore, he shouted to the people. The people who heard this were very angry. They asked him to go away. It was the night of celebrations in the city, and all the people were gathered at the riverbanks. It was then that the prophet had an idea to prove to the people that the idols had no power. He took an axe and walked towards the temple. He entered the temple and smashed all the idols present there. He smashed everything except for the biggest one. He hung his axe around the neck of this idol and left the temple. When the people came to worship at the temple the next day, they were shocked. They saw that all their idols were smashed into pieces. They wondered who could have done this. It was then that one of them spoke up. I'm sure this was done by Ibrahim. He was speaking against our gods yesterday, he said. The people found Prophet Ibrahim and brought him to the temple. Are you the one who has done this to our gods? they asked. Ibrahim was not afraid and he replied casually. Why don't you ask this idol? He said pointing at the biggest statue that was still standing. He must have seen the one who smashed your idols. He will tell you if he can speak, he said mockingly. How would the idols speak? They are made of stone, they asked him. Then why do you worship these idols who cannot speak, nor do they see or hear? You know this, and you still worship them? Have you lost your minds? Some of them realized that Ibrahim was saying the truth, but others were still very angry with him. Punish him, they shouted. They wanted to take revenge for shattering the idols. They tied him in chains and gathered around to discuss how they were going to punish the prophet. Let's burn him in fire, one of them said. Let's build the biggest fire anyone has ever seen and throw him into it. Everyone thought it was a great idea. The people of Babylon then set out to make the largest fire 
anyone ever saw. They wanted to make an example out of the Prophet, to show everyone what they would do to those who disrespected their gods. First, they dug a huge pit to put the firewood. Then, they collected wood from everywhere possible and put those in the pit. They kept adding the wood for many days until it became as huge as a hill. And one day, they lighted the fire. And there it was, a huge fire reaching the skies. It is said that no one could go near because of the heat. Not even the birds could fly above the fire. The next day, they brought the prophet for throwing him in the fire. But there was a problem. No one was able to reach anywhere near the fire because of the heat. How were they going to put the prophet in the fire? They discussed about this new issue among them. Let us use a catapult to throw him in the fire, said one of them. Everyone agreed it was a good idea, and they started making a catapult. Once it was made, they tied the hands and legs of the prophet and placed him on the catapult. When they cut the strings, the prophet was thrown in the air towards the fire. While in the air, an angel appeared before Ibrahim and asked if he had any wish to be granted. The prophet could have easily sought help of this angel to escape punishment, but he did not. Instead, he said, I only wish for Allah to be pleased with me. But a miracle happened when the prophet landed in the fire. The fire didn't burn the prophet, and it burned only the ropes that tied him. The prophet didn't feel any heat at all. The prophet sat there in the fire and started singing praises of Allah. The people thought the fire would have burnt the prophet and they waited there for the fire to subside. And when the fire went out finally, the people were shocked to see the prophet sitting unharmed. The prophet walked out of the fire without a single burn in his body. It is a miracle, some shouted. His God has saved him, shouted the others. Maybe he was saying the truth. Some of the men there realized that there was something divine about the prophet. But most of them were still angry because he had smashed their idols. They bound him in chains and took him to the king's palace. Babylon was ruled by an evil king named Nimrod during those days. Nimrod was an idol worshipper, and he considered himself to be an incarnation of God. He was an evil man and punished his people as he willed. When Nimrod heard that the prophet had smashed his idols, he was very angry. The prophet was tied in chains and he was brought into the palace. How dare you smash the idols of our gods? asked Nimrod. They were mere idols, not gods, replied the prophet. Tell me, who is the true god then? asked the king. There is only one god who can grant life and death. He is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the true god. I can give life and death too. I will show you. Nimrod asked his soldiers to bring two of his slaves into the court. The slaves were brought, and they were asked to kneel down. Nimrod asked his soldier to kill the first slave. The soldier struck the slave with his sword and killed the slave instantly. Then he asked the soldier to kill the second slave. The soldier raised his sword, but just before striking, the king asked him to stop. Then. The king looked at the prophet and said, You see, I can give death and I can give life too. But the prophet remained nonchalant and said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the sun rise from the east. Can you change that and make the sun rise from the west instead? The king was baffled. Then the prophet put forward many such arguments the king was speechless. The king realized 
that there was no point in confronting the Prophet, so he let the Prophet walk away freely. Prophet Ibrahim السلام, preached to the people of Babylon for many years, but nobody was willing to listen except for his wife Sara and his nephew Lut. السلام. He soon realized that the people of Babylon were never going to listen to his words. So he decided to leave the city with the two followers he had. The Prophet decided to ask his father one last time if he was willing to join him. But his father refused, and the Prophet bid him goodbye for the last time. And that day, the three of them left the city of Babylon. The Prophet was sad because he was leaving the city he loved so much. But he wanted to spread the message of Allah to as many people as he could. And for this, he had to leave Babylon. It was a long, hard journey through the desert. They traveled through Syria, Palestine, and Egypt. Prophet Ibrahim السلام, spoke about Allah's message to the people he met along the way. They helped the poor, and they did many good deeds on the way. When the people heard the Prophet, many of them started doubting their practice of worshipping the idols. When they reached the Dead Sea, Lut السلام, decided to part ways and settled down there. He wanted to preach Allah's message to the local people. The Prophet thought this was a good idea and wished him all the luck. The Prophet and his wife continued their travel. Once it so happened that they entered the territory of an evil king. Sara was a very beautiful woman. When the local people saw her, they were quite enchanted by her looks. The king soon came to know about this beautiful woman who was accompanying the Prophet. But he didn't know that she was the wife of the Prophet. He asked his soldiers to bring the Prophet to him. The Prophet was brought into the palace, and the king asked who was the lady accompanying him. Ibrahim السلام, knew that if he had told the truth that Sarah was his wife, then they would not hesitate to kill him and take her. He thought of an idea and told them that she was his sister. Please bring your sister to the palace tonight, said the king. I want to meet this woman. Everyone in the kingdom is talking about her beauty. The prophet had no option now. He agreed and went to his wife. You have to come with me to meet the king, said the prophet. Sara was confused, and she asked him why. I don't know the reason, but whatever happens, do not ever tell these people that you are my wife. I have told them that you are my sister. Sara agreed, and she accompanied the Prophet to the palace. When the king saw Sara, he was enchanted by her beauty, asked her to come close to him. And as soon as she reached him, he tried to take hold of her. But the moment he raised his hand, they froze. It was a miracle. The king was scared. He tried his best to move his hand, but he couldn't. He realized that only Sara could help him. So he begged her, Please help me. I will never try to harm you again. Sara agreed. And she prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When she prayed, his hands got cured miraculously. When the king realized that his hands were healed, the stupid king tried to take hold of Sarah again. <laughs> what a fool he was! But the moment he raised his hands, they froze again. The king cursed himself for being so stupid and requested Sara once again to cure him. I'm sorry, I, I am so sorry for trying to harm you, he said. Please, pray to your God and cure me. I will never harm you again. That's a promise. 
Sarah was a kind woman, so she prayed to Allah, and the king's hand got cured for the second time. The king realized that Sarah was not an ordinary woman. You are unlike any other woman I have seen, and your God is so powerful, he said. I wish to give you a small gift. Please accept one of my maid servants. Her name is Hajar, and she will help you with your chores. In the meantime, the Prophet was waiting impatiently to know what was going on. He sighed a big relief when he saw Sarah walking in unharmed. What happened? he asked her. Allah taught that evil king a lesson, she said and he gave me an Egyptian maid as a gift. Her name is Hajar. The Prophet continued preaching to the people for many years. He spoke about Allah's message to people in different lands. He had grown quite old by now, and his hair had turned gray. But he continued with his mission vigorously. His wife, Sara, had grown old too. She was sad that she couldn't give birth to a child. She was way too old to give birth now. So she thought of an idea. She asked the Prophet to marry the servant Hajar radiallahu anha, who was young and beautiful. The Prophet refused at first, but later he obliged as he longed for a child of his own. Prophet Ibrahim السلام, got married to Hajar radiallahu anha. Sara prayed to God to bless the couple with a child. God heard her prayers, and he soon blessed them with a child. I will call you Ismail, said the Prophet. The Prophet loved Ismail so much, but his happiness didn't last for long. One night, When the Prophet was sleeping, he had a revelation from God. God asked him to take his wife Hajar and his newborn son Ismail to a certain place and leave them. The Prophet was confused at first. He loved his son so much, but he knew that he had to follow Allah's commands. He went to Hajar and woke her up. Get Ismail and get ready for a long journey, he said. Hajar trusted her husband, and without questioning him, she took Ismail and left with him. Prophet Ibrahim took his wife and newborn son into the desert. They traveled through the desert for a very long time. They walked for many days, and most of their food and water were exhausted. Finally, they reached a dry valley of the desert near Al Marwa mountain. It was a barren land, and there was no sign of life here. There were no trees and no water anywhere in sight. Then, without saying any word, the Prophet started walking back. He left the mother and child alone in that barren valley. They only had a small amount of food and water with them, but that wouldn't even last for two days. Hajar hurried after him. Where are you going, leaving us all alone? She shouted. But the Prophet kept walking and didn't utter a word. She called him again and pleaded him to come back. But the Prophet didn't even look back, and he kept walking away. In spite of her cries for help, when she saw the Prophet was silent, she realized that he was not acting on his own. She realized that he must have received commands from God to act in such a way. Did Allah command you to leave us in the desert? She cried. The Prophet shook his head. Then his noble wife said, Do not worry, we are not going to be lost, since Allah, who commanded you, is with us. The Prophet continued walking without looking back. In the last episode, we saw that Prophet Ibrahim left his wife and son in the middle of a desert. The Prophet did so as commanded by God. 
The place where he had left them was called Al Marwa, and it was so barren that there was no vegetation and no water anywhere in sight. In a few hours, the food and water that Hajar radiallahu anha had in reserve got over. The baby soon got thirsty and started to cry. She ran to a hill close by called Al Marwa, hoping to find somebody. She stood there and looked around, but she saw no one. Then she ran to the next mountain called Al Safa, hoping to find someone from there. But she couldn't find anyone from there either. Then she ran back to the top of Al Marwa, then again to Al Safa. She kept running between these mountains seven times. By the time she climbed Al Marwa for the last time, she was very tired. It was then that she heard a voice. She kept quiet and waited to hear the voice again. When she heard the voice for the second time, she said, Oh, whoever you might be, you have made me hear your voice. Have you got something to help me? It was then that she saw an angel. The angel was digging the earth. The angel kept digging till water flowed from it. It was a miracle. When she saw the water, she ran toward it and placed some stones around it to build a basin. This place where the water rose is called Zamzam. Hajar radiallahu anha didn't go anywhere else and stayed at Zamzam. Many days had passed. One day, a few people were traveling through Mecca when they saw the birds flying around Al Marwa. They knew the birds were there because of the water. The men were surprised to find a woman there. She was holding a baby too. Shall we stay here and use this water, please? They asked her. Hajar agreed, and they drank water from the Zamzam. Many others arrived at Al Marwa, and some of them eventually settled down there. In a few years, the whole valley came alive, with people from different cities living there now. Hajar and her child were not alone any longer. In the meantime, Ismail alayhi salam grew up. He learned Arabic from the travelers. People loved and respected him for his qualities. He kept thinking about his father and knew that his father will come back someday. Ismail then married a local woman and lived his life in peace. Prophet Ibrahim salam was missing his son very badly now. It had been years since he saw Ismail. One day, he decided to go to Mecca to meet his wife and son. He traveled for many days and finally arrived at Al Marwa. The Prophet was quite surprised when he saw all the activity at Al Marwa. Last time he was here, there was not even a single soul living on this mountain. He knew it was all because of God and thanked him. But by the time he arrived, it was very late. People told him that Hajar had died some time ago. The Prophet was very sad to hear this. And then the local people told the Prophet that his son Ismail was still alive. The Prophet was very happy to hear this. When Ismail heard the news that his father was back in town, he ran toward him. He could not believe his eyes. He was waiting to see him for so long. He hugged his father and he started crying. It was a happy time for both father and son. 
but the happiness didn't last for long. One day, God decided to test Ibrahim. One night, when the Prophet was sleeping, he saw a dream. In his dream, the Prophet saw himself killing his son as a sacrifice. When the Prophet woke up in the morning, he ignored it, thinking it was just a dream. But the next night, he saw the same dream again. This time, he realized that this was not just an ordinary dream. It was Allah asking him to sacrifice his own son. The Prophet went to his son and told him about the dream. Ismail understood that it was an order from Allah. He was a man of faith and realized that he has to comply. Do what Allah has asked you to, he told his father. The next day, the Prophet took a rope and a knife and set out for Mount Arafat, along with his son. Upon reaching the top of the mountain, Ismail asked his father to tie his hands and legs so that he may not struggle during the sacrifice. The Prophet obliged and tied his hands and legs. Then he blindfolded himself so that he won't have to watch his son suffer. Then he raised his knife for the sacrifice. But then, suddenly, he heard a voice. The voice asked him to stop the sacrifice and told him that this was just a test. The prophet was relieved. His son was going to be alive. They hugged each other and cried tears of joy, for they had just passed a difficult test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ismail alayhi salam joined his father in preaching to the people. They spoke about Allah and called people to Islam. One day, Allah ordered the Prophet to build a house for worship. The Prophet told his son that Allah had ordered him to build the Kaaba, and Ismail replied, Do what your God has ordered you to do. They soon started building the foundation of the Kaaba. Ismail السلام, helped by carrying the stones while Prophet Ibrahim السلام, built the house. When the walls got tall, Ibrahim alayhi salam could not reach the top. So, Ismail alayhi salam brought a large stone for the Prophet to stand on. The stone was called Maqam Ibrahim and can still be seen today. The foundation was soon completed. But there was a gap left in the corner. Ibrahim alayhi salam asked his son to find a stone to fill in the corner. I feel tired, he said to his father. But when the old prophet insisted, Ismail went searching for a stone. When he left, Ibrahim sat there waiting for the stone. But then a miracle happened. An angel flew down from heaven carrying a stone. The angel told him that this stone was brought to earth by Adam alayhi salam from paradise. The stone was originally white, but because of the sins committed by the people on earth, its color gradually turned into black. Ismail returned after some time, and when he saw the stone, he was surprised and asked his father where it came from. It was brought by someone who never gets tired replied Ibrahim. They had finally finished building the Kaaba. They prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept their work. Allah was very happy with the Prophet and his son for spreading his message and proclaimed the pilgrimage among men. They will come to thee on foot and on every kind of camel Lean an account of journeys through deep and distant mountain highways. Many years had passed. The Prophet 
had grown old by now. One day, he was sitting outside his house and saw three men coming towards his house. The three men were actually angels sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet welcomed them inside to have food. The strangers went in and sat down for food. The Prophet served them a roasted calf, but the strangers did not touch the food at all. The Prophet started to fear. Then the angels comforted the Prophet and asked him not to fear at all. They told him that they were actually the angels sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.